honorable members, on 19th March 2024, my attention was drawn to a letter issued by the Executive Secretary to the President, Nana Asante Bediotu, addressed to the clerk to Parliament, which letter is clearly, in my opinion, contemptuous of Parliament. The letter outlined that the clerk ought to, and I quote, seize and desist, unquote, from attempting to transmit the Human Sexual Rights and Family Values Bill 2024 to the President for necessary action in accordance with the provisions of our Constitution. In the said letter, the executive secretary indicated that the office of the president was aware of two pending applications for an order of interlocutory injunction seeking to restrain the clerk and parliament from transmitting the bill to the president. It further indicated that the honorable attorney general had on 18th March 2024 informed the president that he had received the two applications and had advised the president not to take any step in relation to the bill until matters raised by the suit are determined by the Supreme Court. As a result, the president, via the executive secretary, conveyed, conveyed to the clerk that it was unable to accept transmission of the bill. Honorable members, my attention has also been drawn to the 18th March 2024 letter from the Honorable Attorney General being referred to by the Executive Secretary to the President, Nana Asante Video 2 above. In the said letter, that is the letter from the Attorney General, I note that the Attorney General used the phrase, and I quote, I will respectfully advise that a decision to assent to the bill be made after the determination of the application for interlocutory injunction, unquote, and not an advice to the president not to receive the bill from parliament. It is therefore interesting that in view of this clear and unambiguous advice from the Attorney General, which I disagree with, to the President, the President has rather chosen not to accept the bill. In the face of these developments, it is important for us as a House to reflect upon the matter in which these events have unfolded. On the 28th of February 2024, this August House took a decisive step in passing the bill, a move that was a culmination of rigorous debate, thoughtful deliberations, and the collective will of the representatives of the people. Following this, the bill underwent the customary process of cross-checking, which is an important procedure designed to ensure that all amendments and changes proposed during the legislative process were accurately incorporated. After the successful processes were done with, the clerk to parliament fulfilling his duties as the procedural intermediary between the legislative and executive branches and there to send the bill to the president in accordance with section 5 of the Interpretation Act 2009. 
Act 792. Honorable members, I also bring to your attention the receipt of a process from the courts titled Robson. Honorable member, I'm watching you. And I hear what you say. <laughs> Be that as it may, honorable members, I also bring to your attention the receipt of a process from the court titled Robson Nelson H. K. Dafiamapo versus versus the Speaker of Parliament and the Attorney General, suit number J1-12-2020, slash slash which process was served on the 19th, that is yesterday, March 2024, and an injunction motion on notice seeking to restrain the Speaker from proceeding with the vetting and approval of the names of the persons submitted by His Excellency the President until the provisions of the Constitution are satisfied. Honorable members, in the light of this process, the House is unable to continue to consider the nominations of His Excellency the President to use the language of the Attorney General and Minister for Justice, quote, in the spirit of upholding the rule of law, unquote, until, until after the determination of the application for interlocutory injunction by the Supreme Court. <laughs> Honorable members, this is the precedent that is being set by His Excellency the President for all Ghanaians to follow. So any matter that comes before Parliament, any Ghanaian can issue a writ and follow it with an application for injunction. And that is enough to injunct Parliament from proceeding with the consideration of the business in the House. <laughs>